Yeah, man. Hello, my name is Miguel, and today I'm gonna make for you okra fish fritters. It's different. It's probably new. So you need three or four okra pods flour. I'm not making a lot, so I'm using about a cup of flour, basil, parsley, garlic, scallion, red pepper or scotch bonnet pepper, salt, salted fish or codfish, and water. Visit jamaicadinners.com for the recipe. There I will have ingredients. Oh, baking powder. If you're gonna use all-purpose flour, use, don't use any baking powder or use very little if it's not if it's not all purpose like regular flour use quarter teaspoon to between half a teaspoon of baking powder it's a red pepper it's a good substitute for scotch bonnet pepper this is two garlic cloves which i'm now preparing i'm just removing the leaves cutting off any spoilage brown spots I cut off the ends as well. You see how these trays are so handy? And them come clean and everything. So you can use these trays as chopping board, you know. Just make sure you don't get the foam, the, the foam that they use to make the tray in the food. That way when you finish, you just throw out everything. And you won't have to wash up in a chopping board. And you won't have to worry about germs coming on your food off the chopping board. That's why I don't use chopping board much, people. For those of you who don't know. I know some of you guys know why I don't use it. But I'm very skeptical using chopping boards. Because you can't be sure it's, it's clean. The way how it's designed. Or the purpose of it. Alright, so do as you see me doing... And now, removing the dying leaves from the scallion and cutting off the root ends and the tip. This is, a, this is half of a small onion that I have left over. I'm just now peeling it, removing the brown leaf. I'm leaving the first layer of the onion because that's the strongest. This is garlic, not garlic. Okra, okra. For those of you who didn't know, my name is European. It's not Spanish, like Miguel. Although it's connected, it's the same connection. To me, language is lovely. Although I talk Patois as my main, as my first language, which is broken English to me, I love language. I don't know how I'm able to say words so lovely. I like saying words and I've all and for some reason I like literature. I can't say why because I'm not the best of reader and I'm not the best of speller. But I love literature. I love history too. Right, so this is the okra. one of those okra that has the block spots on it sometimes it's not germs nor dirt or anything all you need to do is just make sure the okra is cleaned properly add a couple drops of white vinegar put the okra okras in 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 a container and wash it properly use your hand use a knife if you need to and clean it properly and scrape it lightly lightly scrape it now do as you see me doing Dice the scallion. Fine. If you don't have scallion, it's okay. Although, scallion goes well with fritters, these type of fritters. Now, dice the onion. Fine. Or slice. For now, keep the ingredients separate. See, I'm not, I'm not ready to cut the okra because the okra, the 
okra gives off a slime. Once you cut it, it's going to start draining or dripping or leaking slime, okra slime. That's why they say okra is good for men. That's what they say. I'm not sure if it does. Um, Major and add a, like a quarter, a half a teaspoon between a teaspoon of dried parsley, dried basil. You can use any of these herbs fresh. Just chop it fine. Onion, scallion, basil, parsley, and mashed garlic. Now. Preparing the okra last because I just told you why. Alright, so do as you see me doing cut ends, cut off ends. This is codfish. This here piece probably measures, probably weighs quarter pound. What I like to do with these codfish is just remove. Well, I'm just going to use piece. These codfish they make in these days, is when they salt it and let it dry. It, it, you you'll be able to remove the skin the fish the fish's skin easily so what I like to do is to kind of use my finger or you can use a knife to aid aid you in separating the fish's skin from the flesh so first find the edge and kind of separate it and once you start separating it, you gotta skillfully drag this fish's skin off this flesh. It's easy to me because when, and alternatively, you can boil this piece of fish in, in, in water for about a minute or two. And just allow it to cool, and then use the same knife and kind of scrape off the the the, the, the skin of the fish. Now I'm just rinsing. I'm just running this piece fish on the running water, removing the excess salt. All right, so. Do as you see me doing, rinse your fish properly, remove excess salt. Alright, after that, add enough water for boiling. Just enough, you know, you don't have to use an entire pot of water, half. I just barely add enough water to cover the fish and um, I'm allow it to boil. Put to heat a small saucepan, add the fish with water, the stove's gauge and whatever. You just want it to come to a boil. Leave the lid slightly open, halfway open. The pepper, this is red pepper. Dried red pepper. I'm just using a pinch, which I would say is quarter teaspoon. I just lay it alongside the other seasoning. I have lined out on this tray. Now with the okra, do as you see me doing 
and chop the okras, okras in quarter inch pieces. See, that's my pinky, about half the first bend of your pinky, or about the size of the first bend of your pinky. See, I use my pinky as a guide, so you can see the size. After two minutes, this is good enough, that's what you want. It, tends, it tenderizes the fish somewhat, remove this water. Allow the piece of fish to cool. We're going to debone it next. And an easy way to cool it, just add water, some water, room temperature water, and cool the fish down if you're in a hurry. I was kind of kidding at the front, you know, but I'm kind of serious too because this will interfere with your moods, your love making moods. So now I'm deboning the fish, the caught fish. So it's easy to handle, there's no skin or scale to deal with. So you just do as you see me doing and kind of patiently. Go through and remove the fish bone, the fish's bone. Debone the fish. So there are some little fine bones that's placed right next to each other at some part of the fish, find it and they take them out. Put to eat a saucepan, medium sized pots, a medium sized saucepan. Put the soap gauge on four, medium low. Add no more than a tablespoon of oil, cooking oil. Allow the oil to get hot somewhat, a few seconds. Add your codfish chunks. The prepared codfish chunks after a minute. Add the chopped onions, the chopped scallions, stir fry, stir fry. You want to dry stir fry because it's just a one tablespoon of oil I use. It's probably dried out already. You don't want to add too much oil. So that's the that's the idea. Those gauges on four let's allow it to saute. You can turn it on two. It's been on two, sorry, it's two allow. Two is low, like medium low. Low. Few seconds after I add a chop a mashed garlic. Let me give you a tip. In making codfish fritters when you make the codfish crispy, when you fry them dry and crispy, that's a good idea. It makes the fritters interesting. Right, a few seconds after, add the chopped okra. Now would be a good time to turn the stove gauge on low, almost off low. It's been on two before before now add your pepper and dried herbs stir it in stir it in add a tablespoon of water the stove gauges are low almost off that's where you want it
I had it about a tablespoon between three tablespoons of water. You need the water to kind of aid with the steaming. Now I'm going to make our fritters dough. So measure and add one cup of flour. In today's case, I'm just using regular flour. It's not all purpose. But for you, all purpose is best. And best is better. Measure and add half cup. I recommend visit jamaicadinners.com for the recipe. There you'll see the ingredients. All right, so measure and add half cup water. And do as you see me doing and kind of mix the dough smooth. I almost forgot. It's best to add the baking powder to the dry dough before adding water. So measure and add a quarter teaspoon between half teaspoon of baking powder. Look guys, if you use the baking powder with the all-purpose flour, it's still okay. Why I don't use the bake too much baking powder? Because it will suck up the oil. Baking powder kind of suck up the oil. A lot of people who deep fry these fritters, it, you don't notice the oil being sucked up. So that's why I don't use the baking powder that much. Because from my experience, it tends to suck up the oil. And if you are using just like if you weren't deep frying these fritters, you'll find yourself keep on adding oil. And all of that oil is not escaping in the hair, it's soaking in the fritters. And you don't want that. So I like my fritters with very little, if any at all, baking powder. You saw me mix this dough smooth. This is how you want it. Use a spoon to, to take the dough, lift it, you know what I mean by it. Lift the dough, a spoon of the dough and drop it back in the dough and drain it back in the dough to see how thick your dough is. Now, after a minute or so, minute between two, okra steaming is ready. You just turn it off and put it aside for later. Now, I'm using a big skillet. Put it to heat, put the stove gauge on six. After a minute or so, no water is in the frying pan and it's dried out. Add oil. I'm using about a cup between a cup and a half, a cup and a half of coconut oil. Vegetable oil is good, any cooking oil is good. This is my okra that's been dry steaming for a minute between two. I do this because I don't want the okra too raw after the fritters cooked. So this is my assurance to make sure that the okra is cooked. So let me just remove a couple fish bones that I didn't saw earlier. So do as you see me doing. Add this mixture. To your dough. Do as you see me doing and kind of mix full under the okra and the fish mixture in your liquid dough, in your fritters dough. You don't need to mix it like you mix in syrup. That's kind of just mix it through. You just want to make sure all the okra is evenly mixed in the dough. So do as you see me doing. Mix your dough properly. So that's what you want. You want a nice lift and drop dough. It should just lift and drop like that. 
it's okay if you use a bigger spoon if you if it's unable to get a nice grip with the smaller spoon like a big cooking spoon like you see after a few minutes and the oil is hot enough so hot remember I was saying you can use a bigger spoon if you're unable to get a, a nice grip it's okay the fridges will only be bigger and takes a little bit longer to fry uh, we we'll allow the oil to get hot. Once you see a little smoke, that's a sign to say it's ready. After about three minutes, stove gauges on four for now. While adding them, it's best if you keep the stove on four medium low because it's gonna start frying fast. You don't want it to start frying too fast. Do as you see me doing. Take a scoop of this spoon. This is the regular spoon that you have in your home. I think it's about a tablespoon. And lift and drop your raw okra fish fritters dough in the eating oil. Lift and drop a spoon of your okra fish fritters do in your eating oil. Visit jamaicadinners.com for the recipe. Subscribe, like and share. You must try cooking this, these fritters for yourself and give us feedback. That's the idea. Allow. After a minute, turn the stove up on six medium high do as you see me doing and gently go through and separate the fritters from each other after a minute of frying it will be easier to do so Allow. Look at that. Once it starts to brown around the edges, that's a sign to say it's almost time to flip your fritters on the other side. But for now, this is how it looks. They're frying away. They look delicious and beautiful. I gotta do a whole heap of damage. Alright, it's been three minutes. Stove gauge is on six, medium high. That's what you want. Start flipping your fritters. You see that nice, beautiful golden color? That's what you want. These fritters are going to be crispy, flavorful. aphrodisiac effects I can almost smell these fritters through the well, I'm smelling it for real, but you're going to be able to almost smell it through the, through the screen. Alright, so these look beautiful. They do, don't they? Alright, so we're, we're on the right track. Let's allow. Six between seven minutes. This is what it looks like. Do as you see me doing and kind of go through. Look at your fritters. See how they're frying. Flip them again on the other side. And allow. Get a 
plate or bowl and get it well let it stay for about two more minutes stove gauge is on six medium eye go through do what I'm doing look through each one see what's ready and remove finish or crop fritters flip the ones that need to be fried more on the other side By keeping the stove gauge on 6, medium high, it's not going to suck up, the fritters are not going to suck up the oil, they're not going to be soggy or with oil, or sog with oil, or soaked with oil. gonna be crispy finish Just turn the stove off and if you can Remove the eating oil on a full part of the stove. You see these oil that we're frying in? We use them over and over again. And if you, and if you practice these method, these, these method of how you use the frying oil, you can use them again. Once the oil is not contaminated, you will be able to use it until it's finished. This is okra fish fritters. Visit jamaicadinners.com, subscribe, like, share, cook these fritters yourself, give us feedback. Let me know if it has aphrodisic effect, effects or affects. Listen to how crispy is this okra fish fritters. See the okra. Crispy. Obviously, here the crunching of these fritters against my against my tooth. All right. See ya. Yeah, man. Ladies, ladies, make these okra fish fritters. For your man one Sunday morning and by night long loving and it's when the pit the barn name him after me if it's a boy name him Miguel with a Q spell it with a Q M-I-Q-U-E-L and if it's a girl name her Michelle